Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, uh, I want to join the Secretary General in thanking you for attending to this press conference. Uh, I also want to thank you for your usual patience. Uh, I know that uh, uh, the invitations were not sent to you timelessly, uh, but you have been able to avail yourself. We meet at the, at the time that Zimbabwe is enmeshed into a serious economic crisis. And this economic crisis has been <coughs> exacerbated by the current volatility and the apparent confusion of the government on how to deal with this current vol volatility. Uh, at one stage, the government uh, uh, banned uh, uh, borrowing uh, from the banks, and in, in so doing, it acted in a way that was under business, and all that was shocking. We are happy to note, however, that the Reserve Bank has now reversed that very unreasonable uh, policy. So um, we, we notice that there is a lot of uh, 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 suffering that our people are going through. And the inflation has gone <coughs> up. Uh, the uh, ability of our people to afford basic commodities has been compromised. First with this, the role of the opposition is to put things right. We continue with our call that the answer to Zimbabwe's social, political, and economic conundrum is inclusive, genuine, and unconditional dialogue. We are therefore going to be uh, uh, upping our ante on the issue, on the need for dialogue. These problems are beyond the capacity of one person, one party, um, and so on. It is to be tackled by all Zimbabweans together. And we, therefore, are going to be calling, we, we are going to be increasing our call for national dialogue. And uh, if the government remains uh, slow in its reaction to the call for dialogue, we will have to use other means to make sure that uh, the Zimbabweans are ahead, to make sure that uh, dialogue has, has, to be done, has, has been done. Um, after our after the 26 uh, uh, March um, by elections, we had our national council meeting, uh, which made a number of resolutions. One of these resolutions was for the party to embark on a serious restructuring exercise. We have begun that uh, restructuring exercise in order to change our party to be a credible change agent. So all our leaders from the National Standing Committee, National Council, National Executive are going to be involved in grassroots root mobilization. Uh, and they have been given a specific uh, time <coughs> period by the, uh, by, by, the, by the National Council. So we are going to be embarking on a serious um, uh, 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 recruitment ex exercise. Already we have started with the youths in Harare and we are very happy about the level of motivation that is there within the youth assembly uh, and the level of dynamism that is there within the organs of the party including the women's assembly. So the women will be doing their mobilization as well. Um, we are going to be having our national uh, congress uh, the leadership um, uh, of the National Directorate, headed by the National Chairperson, uh, Honorable Komichi Ye, is going to advise us tomorrow as to uh, the exact date upon which this uh, uh, co uh, Congress will be held. We want to hold a Congress that is credible. We want a Congress that uh, uh, is peaceful and well organized. This Congress is not only going to deal with elections. Yes, there will be election of leadership um, uh, at that Congress, but there are other issues, two important issues that are going to take place at this Congress. One is uh, the discussion on policy. Now that Zimbabwe is in these economic challenges, 
it has become more and more important that we deal with the issue of policy. So our department uh, dealing with that policy is now working in full swing and uh, our sector for policy has been given instructions to move across the country uh, to uh, talk to the people about the policy interventions that they want to see. We are also consulting key stakeholders on uh, the policy interventions. So one of the most important things at this Congress will be policy. Policy designed to make Zimbabwe better. Policy des designed to make our people live a better life. So our secretary is going to deal with that. The second issue that is going to be dealt with at Congress uh, is the issue of uh, the restructuring of the organization, uh, by which I mean certain constitutional changes that have to be uh, done. One of these constitutional changes, of course, is the issue, the perennial issue of gender representation, equitable and equal gender representation, youth representation, and so on. Um, while we are still on the issue of uh, gender and youth, we are putting the government on notice to operationalize amendment number two in so far as it deals with uh, women representation in council uh, as well as youth representation in parliament. The constitutional amendment was passed in 2001 and certain of the clauses of the <coughs> constitutional amendment have been operationalized. For example, the, uh, the, the clause dealing with the term of office of the judges has been operationalized and as we speak, Justice Malaba is actually doing his work as Chief Justice. But the same constitutional amendment talks of the representation of the youth uh, in the parliament. So we demand that the 10 youths be sworn into parliament right away. We also demand that the quota for women in the, in the, in the council be operationalized and they be uh, uh, allowed to take office now. So it's a thing that we will be uh, pushing a government, but it's also a thing that is going to dominate our discussion at Congress. Uh, of course, there's going to be elections at Congress, um, and these elections will be done uh, by the members of the MDC. So we are going to start our Congress processes. Um, there are going to be uh, uh, Congresses at what level, um, district level, then the national, uh, the, the provincial and the national level. When we get to the provinces, uh, there will be a, pro a process of nomination of the candidates. Um, and uh, then we go to the national congress, the main congress itself. At this congress, true to tradition, we are going to be electing one another into office. There is no position that is holy. There is no position that is a no-go area. So we are going to have uh, elections for president. We are going to have elections for vice president, national chairperson, vice national chairperson, uh, ETC. And uh, when the time comes, uh, the, there will be the, the, the nominations, uh, internal nominations. After nominations, the candidates are allowed to canvas for support. And they are going to have about a, a month uh, to do that. Uh, before that uh, thing is opened, it is not proper to start canvassing for, for support. Uh, right now, we are doing a restructuring so that we have uh, 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 delegates for Congress. So with a month to go to Congress, the um, uh, prospective candidates will be allowed to canvass for support within the party. The people who are going to vote at this Congress are members of the party uh, and not members of the public. So our campaign will be in-house. Um, so we are going to have that process. And uh, as I said, uh, even the highest office is uh, uh, contestable. 
we were uh, tasked by the National Council to do some restructuring, uh, reshuffle of our uh, uh, leaders of the National Standing Committee. And uh, we had a month of consultations uh, with our people. And the results are as follows. And I need to state here, uh, before I read out the names, I need to state here that the resolution of the National Council was for the President to do reshuffle um, and not to remove uh, leaders from uh, the leadership organs that they sit in. So you will see that uh, it may be the same faces but allocated different roles. We looked at a number of issues. Uh, the first important issue is the task that we have. Uh, the task to strengthen the party and to strengthen the party in the departments that we, we, we thought needed attention. Number two, it is to enable the party to prepare for its internal process, the Congress. Number three, it is to enable the party to be uh, positioned to play a leading role in the issue of dialogue. So our leadership uh, at the top, we have uh, uh, myself as president, um, then uh, engineer Mzuri, Senator Mzuri, as the uh, first vice president, um, Senator Chief Yovu as the uh, uh, second vice president, uh, Senator uh, Morgan Komichi, uh, national chairperson. Um, we have not seen, uh, we have not uh, 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 reshuffled there. The deputy national chairperson uh, being uh, uh, Major Tsewa. Um, Secretary General remains Porin Mpariwa, uh, Honorable Mpariwa, who is also uh, our, um, uh, our leader of the opposition in the National Assembly. So she has a, a national responsibility uh, in, uh, there. We have uh, elevated Dr. Takua Mashakada uh, to being the Deputy Secretary General. And uh, he will be responsible for two main issues. <coughs> the first issue that he will be responsible for is fundraising. Uh, as we go uh, towards Congress, uh, he will be responsible for fundraising. Um, he will also uh, have uh, other duties assigned to him by the, by the Secretary General. But uh, one, uh, one of the duties besides fundraising is to be in charge of logistical arrangements um, so that we have a smooth uh, Congress. Uh, we felt that the uh, Secretary General, being the leader of the opposition, um, has uh, 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 responsibilities um, as the Secretary General and also in Parliament. So we, we have uh, put uh, Dr. Mashakada, who is a former Secretary General, uh, to uh, assist Honorable uh, uh, Pariwa. The Treasurer General is Dr. Tichivanani uh, Mavetera. As you can see, Dr. Mavetera and Dr. Mashakada have swapped places. The Secretary General, the, unlike the Secretary General and the Deputy Secretary General's position, uh, it doesn't, uh, the Treasurer General's position is not as busy. So uh, Dr. Mavetera, who is a medical doctor, takes over as the uh, Treasurer General uh, until we get to, until after Congress. He will be deputized by uh, Honorable Brian Dube. Honorable Brian Dube is the current Secretary for Public uh, Accounts uh, within, within Parliament. The, the organizing secretary who was gifted Chimani, was, was gift Chimani Kire, he is now in charge of uh, dialogue uh, and fraternal organizations within the president's office. So the new organizing secretary is uh, Mr. Rhino Mashaya. Uh, Mr. Rhino Mashaya was the deputy uh, organizing secretary. He is a young man, he's dynamic, and uh, I think he possesses 
the positive arrogance for this job. Um, and he will be deputized by two people. Uh, the first person is Mr. Benevolence Taisekwa. Mr. Benevolence Taisekwa is the, is the current uh, secretary for the Youth Assembly. So we have put him into organizing. Uh, the second uh, deputy organizing secretary is Mr. Dube Mukombwe. Mr. Dube Mukombwe is from Binga, Matebelele North. So as you can see, we have uh, two deputy organizing secretaries. One will be ch in charge of the Mashona land side, uh, uh, or the Mashona land half of Zimbabwe, uh, as, the, as the deputy organizing secretary. And the, one, the other one will be responsible for uh, the Midlands and Matabeledet. We are going on a serious restructuring exercise. And these people will oversee the restructuring of the party. The deputy, the, the sector for mobilization remains Honorable Tangwara Matimba. He is joined by the Deputy Secretary for Mobilization, <coughs> uh, Pini Rodenga, Honorable Pini Rodenga. He, is the, uh, he was the chairperson of uh, Mashona Lake East for almost a decade. Uh, we have now moved him to mobilization because this is going to be key as the, can as the, as the country and the party prepare for, um, for the elections of 2020. He is a veteran organizer, and we think that he will add value there. We have a new deputy secretary for information and publicity. The secretary for information and publicity remains uh, witness Dube. He's not here, he's in Blauwell today. He will be deputized by uh, Honorable Festus Dumbo. Honorable Festus Dumbo is based in Mashingo in Triangle. Um, uh, and uh, he was a member of parliament. He is a veteran sports administrator and a soccer trainer, actually, a <coughs> soccer coach. He is also a boxer. So, um, beware, Oboro Chimono, I have put a boxer there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Honorable Lumbu is going, to, is going to be the deputy spokesperson. Uh, you will be given his details. Um, we have uh, uh, the sector for local government as uh, Faith Msarurwa, uh, she remains there. The deputy sector for local government is Spiwe Banda Mchenje. Um, she is the uh, uh, proportional representation MP for Man Ma Shonaland East. She is also a veteran. Sector for elections. Uh, it remains Mr. Gandhi Mzingwa. He is going to be deputized by two people. Uh, <coughs> the current deputy, Siwe Buda Masara, Honorable, and the Honorable Kalipani Pugen. Because we are going to emphasize on policy, the policy secretary, as well as the gender secretary, are going to be invited to the standing committee as we prepare for, 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 for Congress. Uh, this is because we are going to be sitting every week as the, as the, as the standing committee uh, in order to review the progress in the party restructuring, serious party restructuring. That has nothing to do with Congress. We are also going to be receiving progress on the con on, on Congress. And we would want the Secretary for Policy to give constant reports to the Standing Committee about the preparations for the policy paper that must be tabled before, uh, uh, before Congress. And uh, Dr. Julius Nsevenzi is the Secretary for, uh, for Policy. So, he will uh, be invited to the uh, standing committee uh, to give uh, regular updates about the preparations of the policy document. Uh, we will also be inviting a uh, secretary for gender because of our emphasis 
on gender parity and gender equality. Um, so the Secretary for Gender will also be invited into the standing committee for the period that we are going to be going to Congress. And that's uh, Isabel Simango. Uh, she, will, she is uh, currently the Secretary for Gender in the National Executive. There is, been, there is a, 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 a few vacancies that are there. Uh, we, there are people whom we wanted to put, whom we have not uh, uh, consulted at this point in time, or if we have consulted them, they are still to make their minds. Um, sec I have announced that uh, uh, Gifted Humanity is Secretary for Presidential Affairs, um, responsible for dialogue, and fraternal organizations. We still have another sector for presidential affairs, and this is uh, Vincent Changrai. He remains secretary for presidential affairs, responsible for rebranding and communications uh, in the, within the president's office. So ladies and gentlemen, those are, are the changes that we have made, and I want to emphasize that these changes have been made pending Congress. At Congress, uh, people are free to contest uh, the positions that they want, but right now, for the period that we are in and the agents of the matter, uh, these are the men, men and women we commend to the uh, nation and to the rest of the party. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much for the the presser and their uh, information to the media. Now this is the opportunity that you have been waiting for. If you have any questions, any comments, I will pick for at a time. So that if we see the Sorry, Honorable uh, uh, yes, Chief, uh, I want I to put in one important thing. Um, the, we have also made changes within the Secretariat. Um, and uh, I will not uh, uh, read uh, uh, the, 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 the directors uh, because that's an internal matter. But there is one director that you, you will be interacting with, uh, in, and it is our new director for information and publicity. Uh, and he is Mr. Chengetai Guta. Uh, he is here with us, and he will interact with you if he has not already done so. Uh, he is a, a journalist uh, like uh, uh, most of you. So I thought we, we could, uh, we should make uh, that announcement. Thank you, Honorable President. So I, I is not yet, you will be number one. I'll pick you four. Any other? It's two. Okay, three. Four. Okay. <coughs> yeah, please keep your numbers, number one. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, uh, Gibson, you have been asked for two questions. Uh, the first question, you said you are increasing... Uh, sorry. Kindly state your name in the media house that you need to say. Thank you. Gibson, you have been asked for the error. Please don't ask me a question about whether I'm ashamed or not. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my friend? Where is, the, where is that gentleman? <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. Sorry, Gibson. Gibson, you got from the era. So, I've got two questions. You say that you are increasing calls for dialogue, and I thought, you say we will use other means to make sure Zimbabwe is ahead with dialogue. You say they are going to use other means. So, I wanted to find out which other means uh, are you planning to use as a party? dialogue is not uh, working. And then the second question is, uh, at one point you announced your shadow cabinet. Yeah. So I wanted to find out from the equivalent of your, or the Minister of Finance and Economic Development, what would you have done better to ensure that uh, Zimbabwe's economy is uh, better according to probably some of the pronouncements you say, what would you think your equivalent would say, or what policy measures do you have as a party that are there to counter what probably <coughs> obtaining in the economic environment? Thank you. Okay. I number two. Right, uh, my name is Sean Moyo, two to three times. 
Um, I've got several questions, but uh, I'll start with three. Uh, firstly, um, <coughs> am I forgiven? Can you limit them to two? Um, difficult, but I'll try. All right, um, firstly, uh, on the issue of appointments, you are on your way to Congress uh, in about a month's time. So what's the wisdom behind uh, a new appointment when you're already going to elect a new um, leadership? Is that not a, an attempt uh, respectfully of uh, uh, sort of uh, um, giving a predetermined outcome or to uh, put it simply, is that uh, in, in form of election rigging where you, you put people and then uh, possibly you may be elected to uh, to retain a position in your case. And then number two, uh, you spoke about the economic upheaval um, uh, currently being handled by government economy. But uh, we may note that uh, in America right now, uh, inflation has gone up uh, to 8.2 percent, up from 3 percent last year, and uh, prices have gone up 30 uh, percent generally. And uh, this has cascaded down to us since we use the U.S. dollar. So. Do you think the government is responsible for, for, the, for the current uh, crisis? <coughs> and, uh, how would you address that? Okay, my number three is something again. Yeah. Uh, privilege from the new state. Uh, my question is on uh, youth culture. Okay, so, given that um, youth uh, in Zimbabwe constitute about 67.7% of uh, 18 million, and we are talking about change. Uh, for like 10 cities raised for you. Do you think you should be demanding more for you to be given Thank you. And finally, number four? Yes. My, my name is Kenneth Nagani from News Day newspaper. Uh, my question to you, President, is that uh, the report that uh, they are failing to raise funds to, to hold your Congress. So I just want to know about that. Thank you. Honorable President, those are uh, the questions that have been put to you by the four uh, people from the media. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, with your indulgence, let me first uh, start with uh, uh, Wisdom's question regarding the wisdom of um, a, a cabinet, uh, sorry, a, a, a reshuffle of the leadership ahead of Congress. You will notice that uh, from this uh, 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 reshuffle that we have announced, we have not removed any leader. Uh, we have not demoted any leader. Um, and uh, the leaders uh, still remain within the standing committee. And uh, they are actually allowed to contest any position within uh, the, for, for, for any position at Congress. Uh, these appointments don't don't stop them. We are reassigning people as a result of the need that we feel at this point in time. These leaders, as I said, are going to be preparing for a credible Congress, logistically preparing for a, a, a credible Congress. And you need to strengthen the Secretary General's department in that regard so that you have a logistically sound Congress. So what we have, uh, what we have done there is uh, to give the Secretary General another resource uh, of a person who has organized a Congress before. Uh, you will uh, uh, probably uh, know that uh, Dr. Mashakada was, the, uh, uh, was responsible for organizing a number of Congresses as Deputy Secretary General. Um, and uh, his experience will be handy in this regard. Number two, the party was not formed to do Congress. The party has to move. While we are preparing for Congress, we have to do our core duties, which is to, uh, de uh, to, to devise alternative policy for the benefit of the people of Zimbabwe. Whether we are going to have Congress or not, we will have to do that. We will have to have public meetings. We will have to have uh, uh, restructuring exercise meetings. We will have to have rallies. We will have to have demonstrations should need be. And this doesn't, we don't freeze the party uh, uh, as we go to Congress. The party has to move. And uh, why will these men and women, this reshuffle, answers to certain critical uh, shortcomings 
that we 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 have as a we we have had as a party, and these critical shortcomings were manifested during the by elections. So it has nothing to do uh, with uh, rigging elections. Uh, rigging elections is where you manipulate the vote. There is no manipulation of the vote uh, at all. Uh, this is a reshuffle of the existing members uh, of the of the National Standing Committee, some of whom may contest positions, including the president. They are not uh, uh, they are not disallowed uh, from contesting by virtue of being appointed. But right now, I want the organizing department to function better than before, and we have appointed two people to make sure that the party is restructured. Now, restructuring does not mean preparing for Congress only. Uh, we want a presence at ward level, at branch level, uh, at branch level. We, we, want, we want that. We want to mobilize Zimbabweans. So we don't stop that because uh, there is a Congress. So it has nothing to do with uh, strengthening or weakening anyone. Uh, after all, we do not know, I do not know, uh, who is going to contest for what. So uh, in doing this exercise, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't have information about what the ambitions of each individual leader, uh, leader, uh, leaders are. Gibson, the issue, uh, I'm, I'm sure you misunderstood me. I said that uh, we, are going to, we are going to intensify our call for dialogue. And we are going to resort to any means necessary to make sure that the government is brought to dialogue. We are saying this because the government has been slow in, in, in engaging us in dialogue. And uh, we have seen the results of that inertia on the part of government. The economic life of the Zimbabwean has gone down, has gone for the West. Uh, the currency of volatility, uh, it is worse. The government doesn't seem to be in control. The economic situation of our country is dire. And uh, we, we, we have to make sure that the government is made sensitive uh, to the need uh, to uh, deal with this. Um, the shadow cabinet, um, the shadow cabinet, yes, uh, we have a shadow cabinet, the minister of finance, of finance and economic development, that's Dr. Takua Mashakada. Uh, unfortunately, is not here to answer the economic question uh, that you have you have asked. But there are, are a number of interventions that must be done to make this economy better. Uh, one is to reduce the country risk factor, uh, and this is done by making sure that the government sticks to policy and that. The, 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 the investment of those people who want to bring their money is safe. That's one, one thing. The second thing is to make sure that the government deals with the exchange control issues. You know the inflation right now is being fuel, fueled because Zimbabwe is operating about four exchange rates. Um, uh, that, 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 that it is. You have the parallel rate, you have the auction rate, uh, you have the retail rate, ETC. So um, we, the, 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 uh, we would uh, 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 deal with the issue of the currency uh, separately. Of course, one of the things fueling the currency volatility, the exchange rate volatility, is because of corruption. <coughs> and this corruption is by the people who are privileged already people who are abusing their access to credit, their unfair access to credit, to further impoverish this country. And if what the governor of the Reserve, the Reserve Bank said is correct, people are borrowing money from the banks and are putting the money on the parallel market and they are, they are, are engaged in currency speculation. Now, these are high-ranking people. These are people that the government knows about. And the government has always said, we will shame them, we will shame them, we will shame them. But the government is not shaming them. We are not interested in these people being shamed. We are interested in these people being arrested because they are economic criminals. They are economic 
uh, support to us. So we would deal with uh, the issues of inflation. But of course, uh, uh, Dr. Mashakada will give you a detailed interview about uh, the, what, what needs to be done. Uh, wisdom, you asked that um, inflation is, a, is now a worldwide phenomenon. Um, so why blame the Zimbabwean government uh, only? It's a very fair question, Wisdom. Yes, there are inflation drivers that the, the, the government cannot control. We are feeling the heat of the war in the Ukraine, uh, just like any other, any other country. But there, that is not the only inflation driver in our country. One of the inflation drivers in our country is exchange control. And uh, this is a Zimbabwean phenomenon where there is corruption within the exchange control system. Uh, people are taking money, they are speculating, and it's driving uh, inflation. And this is something within the uh, control, within the uh, ability of the Zimbabwean government to deal with. So yes, there are worldwide factors, external factors, exogenous factors, but there are endogenous factors as well, which is our inability to deal with the economic criminals uh, who are exploiting uh, the exchange control uh, and in the process driving inflation. Yes, um, uh, my young brother, you talked about the youth. Uh, the youth are 67% of the of the of the population and uh, they according to amendment number two they are getting only 10 uh, seats in parliament which 10 seats they have not been given in the, uh, uh, on top of that I totally agree with you and I want to address the youth and say uh, and I will do no better than quote from the Cuban hero Jose Mati, he said, rights are not asked for, they are demanded. They are not freely given, they are taken. So my youth is Zimbabwe, Musa Mirida Kuko Kwaku Michato Wenyu. It is something that the youth of Zimbabwe must demand, and the youth of Zimbabwe, if it was, will have. But what we have been able to do as a parliament, is uh, to give them an incremental gain. Uh, from zero, we, have, we are now at 10 seats. And uh, it's up to the youth to motivate uh, for better representation. Sekuru uh, Nyangani, you are, you are asking about uh, whether the MTC has failed to raise money for the Congress. As the MDC goes to Congress, there will be a lot of falsehoods that will be spread uh, by people who have uh, different agendas. Um, and they will say a lot of things about leaders, um, and already they have started. Before leaders have told you the positions that they are uh, eyeing at Congress, some are already being given positions. Uh, so we are in this season. And we will, have, we will hear a lot of allegations against leaders. Uh, that has become normal. That is something that we are used to. Now, today, your question um, is a very wide question. Uh, and I'm going to resist the temptation of giving you our, our bank balance. <laughs> but let me say to you, MDC will hold its Congress, and it has the ability to hold Congress. So the, the, the Congress will be held, and this is going to be one of the best Congresses that you have ever witnessed. We are aware that there are certain people who want to import chaos into our Congress, and meetings are being held by other political parties to try to destabilize our party, to try to destabilize our Congress. We are going to be very prepared for that. It is going to be a very, very smooth Congress. The accreditation is going to be done um, on time, and there is no foreigner, by which I mean 
the person who is not supposed to be a delegate uh, and who is not supposed to be at Congress uh, to make it to Congress. So that is why you see we have uh, 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 played around uh, with these leaders in order to make sure that uh, in uh, administering this Congress, uh, the Secretary General is uh, fully, fully assisted. Uh, that also goes to the issue of making sure that the, the funds are there. Uh, so we haven't uh, uh, asked anybody uh, 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 for SOS uh, that we are not supposed to ask for. We haven't asked uh, for money that we are not entitled to. So we will be able to hold our Congress. The actual deaths of the Congress, uh, because our Congress is a process system. Uh, they say the uh, uh, chairman is going to sit with this committee. Oh, yes. Uh, actually, the chairperson is telling me that they've actually done the meeting of the election directorate, and they will be reporting to the standing committee regarding the timing of the Congress. No one will be taken by surprise. With a month to go, I will convene the Congress, uh, by which is meant a formal instruction to the Secretary General to issue the notice uh, in terms of our Constitution. Uh, and it is after that proclamation that uh, the uh, uh, candidates who wish to contest can uh, canvass for support in a manner that they want, but of course uh, within the certain rules. All right, uh, I've got a supplementary question, uh, Mr. President. Um, referring to the current, uh, well, the, the, the past by election that just went by, the, the, the last ones, uh, the eight ones, which resulted basically because of your recall, besides uh, those that have died. Again, your party was thoroughly beaten with, with respect. Um, not a single uh, seat was retained, uh, and not a single polling station uh, that you won, not a ward, but polling station. So again, you, you announced a very strong leadership, but uh, the numbers at the elector are not showing. It seems you have a lot of leaders, but not many <coughs> supporters, as the reflection of uh, uh, the by-election. So what's your comment on that, Edda? What, what confidence or guarantee do you give to your supporters that uh, you know, um, you, 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 your party still has a stake in the national um, political discourse? And then number two, on the issue of dialogue. Um, we have a dialogue in the country, I think uh, on two occasions, 1987, Zanu and Zapu, and Zanu eventually it got this way, and Zapu was swallowed. Uh, 2009 to 2018, um, there was a GNU, but essentially it functioned for the first two or so years. The rest of the years, there was haggling between the two parties. So it essentially was not working, it was just uh, you know, pulling apart Zanu, this side, opposition, that side. So how effective is dialogue in the GN move when you can actually really uh, uh, call uh, for a proper environment for elections and have a proper government? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Wisdom. Uh, Sean, sorry. Sean. Sean. Okay, Sean. Um, thank you very much, Sean, uh, for, the, for the two questions. But let me start with the last. I don't think uh, it's fair to say dialogue has failed to produce any meaningful result uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, remember, if we go back to 1980, if you go back to 1979, there was a grueling war of liberation. It ended with the dialogue at Lancaster House, and that dialogue stopped the war, ended the war, and it brought independence. What people then do with the independence, with the newfound space, is a problem of their own. Um, we had a, 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 country, a, a nation that had a golden opportunity to start afresh, um, led by Robert Mugabe. He basically threw away the chance. And uh, uh, you know, there was uh, that bloodletting in Matebele land, uh, human rights abuses, uh, corruption and so on. That is irresponsibility of holding a space that you have been given. Uh, it's like um, 
uh, just giving you an example of a football game. I give you a through pass face to face with the keeper. You blow it across uh, across the bar, right? That's not my fault. I have created space. I have created an opportunity for you to score. So what dialogue does is that it creates the necessary space which must be used responsibly by the leadership. So you see, uh, uh, 1980, we had independence. 1987, there was bloodletting in Matebele. Human rights uh, uh, abuses were happening in Matebele. The dialogue ended that. <coughs> of course, you then had a situation where one party dominated another party. That's the negative part of it. But the peace that came, um, uh, the relative peace that came, is a positive development. Then you go to uh, 2008. Um, it is fair to say that during the GNU, the life of the Zimbabwean person went for the better. And in fact, the economy stabilized. Uh, there was a relative peace. We actually wrote a constitution. There were certain negative things that happened. That is a failure to utilize the political space. And uh, I think that uh, the political parties are wiser now. The MDC, if it was to go into dialogue, uh, knows certain pitfalls that it must not fall into. And by the way, when we talk of dialogue, we are not talking necessarily of a government of national unity. A government of national unity is a binary. The aim of the MDC is to have dialogue so that we have key social, political, and economic reforms. That's what, that is our reason for dialogue. Now, again, wisdom, you always talk in the past tense. Uh, the elections that happened on the 26th of March, my brother, that is past tense. It happened and it happened. It does not give anyone an advantage in the, in, in, in the future. Uh, so what we, we have learned, and uh, Gary Kasparov, uh, the, cha the Russian, is, is he Russian or Russian. Bel Belarusian? Or, yeah, but he was uh, a chess champion. And he had one philosophy that I want my fellow colleagues within the opposition to, to always remember. And this is to say, you must always be wary of the burdens of past victory. Because you want something at one point in time. You think you've won everything. So this is a, a, a contest that we participated in. We didn't do well. We didn't hide it. We congratulated the winners. We went back to the drawing board. We looked at ourselves squarely in the eye and we are taking corrective action. <coughs> we are not a party that cries over spilled milk. And by the way, uh, this by-election, yes, uh, it was a moral booster on whoever won. But it has done nothing to change the political dynamics within the country. That's an objective fact. So, what we are doing, the, in, the interventions you see, are calculated to address the certain weaknesses within the party. And I think we are on a um, on a on a on a good uh, uh, route. By the way, 26 March, 22 percent of Zimbabweans were eligible to vote. Voted. So it is not a display of popularity at all or lack of it. It is uh, what what is there is that 78 percent of Zimbabweans, the majority, were apathetic. They were not happy with the election. Thank you, Thank you, President. Uh, thank you again to you, members of the